Now, uh, a movie I've not seen, and we're going to find out, does it suck? <laughs> <laughs> we, we heard about this, man, a long time ago. Yeah, there's, right. a, there's a specific reason we're analyzing this movie. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, we heard about it a long it time gonna ago. It was going to break box <laughs> office record. When it was announced. To Nostradamus. He, Menace. Was, yes. he was all about this when they were. I, yes. I was. Because yeah, we, we were laughed at, about it with Joe Coy. We were at the height yeah. when it got announced. And, uh, yeah, it was about how they were making a movie about the uh, the invention, the development of flaming Hot Cheetos. Right. Yes. If, I can, if I can rewind us back four or five years. Mm-hmm. Oh, what? what? Oh, yes, we made a billion dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if they... It was going to outgrow yeah. Avatar. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the snack food is so beloved. Uh, we need a movie. Uh, I mean, uh-huh. you even said at the time when that did get announced that your your son even had a, an addiction to flaming Hot Cheetos. Which had nothing to do with the movie. No, right. I'm just saying that the addiction at the time and the popularity of Flaming Hot Cheetos at the time yeah, that the movie got announced. But, that's the whole reason that they were making the movie. Okay, like I love if they you know, came fresh out, baked Toll House chocolate chip cookies. If they made the Toll House movie. Are you going to Toll movie, House the chocolate movie? Chocolate chip cookie movie. <laughs> and it was announced. Oh. You'd be like, whoa, oh my God. And let's just say that <laughs> was like the, the height of Because I can't speak to the Flaming Hot Cheetos thing. I don't really care. Yeah. But like, let's just say Toll House Mania. <laughs> Toll House Mania had yeah. taken over the land and whatever. Uh-huh. They're making a movie. Like as much as I love that, like I would have not been uh, interested in a movie. Yeah, but how often do you what go if to the movies? Tom you just Hanks. went recently no, because it was your son's birthday. No, no, but... no. Going to the movies and watching movies are different. I'll watch movies, but I'll okay. wait usually till they come out. I can watch right. them at home. In, but in theaters Friday. <laughs> but anyways, strawberry. Yeah. anyways. Oh my God, Greg's there. <laughs> <laughs> the movie got announced. The pandemic hit, so yes. everything got pushed back. Okay, that then, was the excuse. Yeah. Well, here's the, the other whole thing. premise is so dumb because you take an existing item and you make it spicy. What hasn't done that before? Why is this special? Well, well here's right. they I'll, explain in the movie. They explain in the movie, and you know what? So the whole movie was premised around the fact that a janitor right. had an idea for flaming hot Cheetos. He and he f- f- pitched it to Frito Lay. And then, CEO. and then it became a worldwide sensation. So of course this was announced. He wrote a book. He'd been on a speaking tour because he is mm-hmm. he was working in Frito Lay in like their marketing. He was an executive at the time. Forever, yeah. right? So he'd been yeah. So his whole that was that's a great story. Yeah. So the yeah. L.A. Times said, okay, let's start talking to people. We'll do a piece on this. And they're like, wait a minute. We everyone we interviewed said this guy didn't invent flaming hot Cheetos, Doritos, Cheetos, whatever. Cheetos. Uh, <laughs> th- th- uh, they were invented two or three years earlier, and in fact they had already. Cop trademarked flaming hot like yeah. before he even said his like his timeline is way messed up and like it wasn't at his factory outside of L.A. it was somewhere in the Midwest. Yeah, but they, which is weird. Why wouldn't they stop him because if he's publicly the whole time? Well, that's the like, thing. This is because what so what uh, Richard Montanez is doing. He's the, by the way the guy, the subject of flaming hot available now on the Hulu. janitor mm-hmm. guy, not the actual guy or the actual person who invented. Is it, right? he was kind of doing mm-hmm. like he would go to do business lunches because he was a business guy. You you know you go to the four H club. They had and he would he was kind of telling this story, telling this story. And Frito Lay didn't really know about him telling this story until this book came out, oh. until the LA Times started poking around. And then they had to say, oh, he didn't do this. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it sounds like to me, and I've, I've watched several interviews. But they still made the movie? Yeah. So that's the thing. They so, still made the movie. But it was but they, still in development. They, but they yeah. still. With his story, what, which is bogus. What every, no, well, what every, everything that Seabass is saying, they do uh, semi address that in we, the movie. We have as some well. clips that will address yeah. it. But first, yeah. the question is maybe the movie's still good. Does, maybe. Maybe. It yeah. Maybe it doesn't suck. Maybe. I say it sucks. Oh, Here's the wait, intro. You know. Here's the intro music. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Are we hey. getting it? Maybe. Are you getting it? Flaming Hot Cheetos. <laughs> huh. They beat you over the head with the <laughs> obvious stick in Flaming Hot so many times. I'll What's the movie some, about? It's about <laughs> Flaming Hot Cheetos. I'll give you some examples. So Richard Montaigne, what he says is that in 1966, he kind of tells his whole life. He's a young yeah. boy. He goes to school in one of the first scenes, and his mom made him burritos to take to school. Okay. Well, the gringos at school said, hey, get these burritos out of here. We want sandwiches only. Yes, yeah, America. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that Taco Bell was founded uh, th- several years earlier in the same part of the yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what burritos are. We hate them. We're going to hurt you. Yeah, nobody hated burritos. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, no. According to Flaming Hot, they did. A- oh. Until Richard, a young boy at the time, tricked some of the gringos into eating the burritos. Oh. They liked them. Oh, and so he's responsible for people liking burritos, yeah. too. <laughs> Again, years after Taco Bell. <laughs> but but he but he was used but that's how as a kid he was hustling and making money uh, and kind of uh-huh. yeah. and here's the here's the scene of him trying to then sell the burrito or actually successfully selling those burritos to the gringos. I became the burrito hustler of Wasty Elementary. Ever heard of a little thing called supply and demand? 
Man, Taco Bell didn't introduce the world to burritos. Me and my mama did. Oh, okay. Well, at least that's what it felt like to me. So there's a, there's a premonition yeah, uh -huh. right there. Uh -huh. So yeah, again. Uh -huh. okay. So maybe I, maybe that's true. I don't sure, know. Sure, sure. But the problem is he's already lied with his whole story, so that's probably a lie too. But okay, it's interesting. He then takes the profits from his burrito sales at school. And what did you do this at school? You sold candy and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, sure mm -hmm. did. You know, so that's not unheard of. And a markup. Mark oh, yeah, yeah, yeah big yeah. time markup. Uh, so he takes a few dollars that he gets from selling burritos, and he's got a girlfriend, a little girlfriend. Aw. Oh, and she mm -hmm. loves chocolate bars. So he goes to the store with a few bucks to buy chocolate bars. And see how believable this is. So he's <laughs> he, he gets this wad of money, not like thousands, you know, a few bucks sure. from selling yeah. burritos to pay for the chocolate bars. But who's behind him? Uh, uh, La Policia, gringo police officer is there, mm. and he does not like that this little boy has dollars. All right. Where'd you steal that from, huh, boy? But I wasn't a white kid. Oh. I was brown. And when the world treats you like a criminal, you become one. So. Yeah. So... He okay. got arrested for having money. He was arrested as a kid for having well, a couple bucks. That's what he said. In the movie, they said they were wondering why he had so much money. There was another part of the scene where he's talking to the person at the cash register. Yeah. So it's a little kid that has a lot of money on him. But not a lot, a lot. Not like, not like a stack of thousands, you know. Enough for yeah. chocolates, right? Right. For his yeah. girlfriend who loves chocolate. Yeah. And then he just gets arrested. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, because they, a criminal. They, they started his criminal career. Because they say... Uh, you know, that's too much money for a little kid to have. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. he must sure. have so he gets arrested, but this starts his criminal career? So what, is that what I'm led to believe so here? That, this is the rags to riches <laughs> part. So he was a young kid, poor, whatever. But then they says, so what they say is at this point, he goes, like, spends like 10 years, not really gang banging, but kind of, you know, low level stuff, stealing cars, stealing, you know, there's like little criminal, being a, a no good, no good Nick. No good okay. For 10 sure. years or so. Okay. Until finally, he's got a wife, wife and kids, and, she, and he's like, man, I got to be a real man. Yeah. I got to get a real job. I'll take anything. So he goes to the Frito Lake company, gets a job as a janitor. Okay. He's got his foot in the door, but mm -hmm. he's still, you know, he's a janitor. What's he going to do? He's just learning the ropes. But you see, you can see he's showing his personality in, in the movie where he's saying, all right, I was a janitor, but I immediately went to like the next higher up guys and said, I want to learn all about what you're doing. The so, machine guys. The, so yeah, he goes to this guy named Clarence, who by the way is played by Dennis Haysbert. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, okay. 24 and mm -hmm. yep. right. insurance commercials, whatever the hell else he does. That's right. So he goes to the machine operator and the machine operator, Dennis, he's, or Clarence, says, uh, is showing him around how the machines work. Because again, he wants to move up and be a better, 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 better person. But he notices some of the chips are burnt coming out of the machine. Oh. And he says, hey, what, what's going on with these these burnt chips? Hey, Clarence, some of these chips are looking kind of overcooked. Should the heat be adjusted? No, the brown ones are separated and then tossed. They just trash them? Dang. <laughs> People always try to throw away the brown ones. Uh. The music is killing me. Yeah, I don't want, is it the music the whole time? Pretty much. <laughs> and again, there you go. Over, obvious stick yes. beating you over the head. Yes. Beating you over the head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, again, this is all, this, is, this actually kind of tracks. We Because okay. he did be, he was a janitor and then he became a machine operator. He, he did work his way up through the company. Yeah, and then be, got into the executive yeah. spot. Oh, so, dang. so forth. So that's all true. Well, to some degree. Yeah. Uh, so now, where did the inspiration for Flaming Hot Cheetos come according to the story. He, he was out after his kids got their ass beat at school, and he goes to get them some street corn, which is often covered with okay. like mayo or butter, and then you sprinkle mm -hmm. on some chili powder or Tahan. other things. Tahin, I mean. Tahan, Tahan, as, Tahan, Tahan, as, Tahan. as the authentic menace would say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he's out there with his kids, and one of his boys gets some Tahan on a elote, some corn. <laughs> uh, and this is where Richard gets the inspiration. Oh. What is it? It burns. Stop eating it, dummy. No, I like it. It burns good. Oh. oh, there's the meat. <laughs> so he looks around. He's like, wait, everybody's enjoying these spicy foods. What? Uh -huh. yeah. This corn on the cob. Wait, we make corn what? chips. Oh. Let's what? put spicy stuff on corn chips. I work at Fritos. It's a mariachi we don't have... band just following go. this guy around. <laughs> Here we go. He's like, we don't have a spicy line. Now, except yeah. they already had a spicy line. Again, they trademarked the name years earlier. They'd already tested it earlier. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, Menace but brings... he didn't... When... He didn't... Maybe he didn't know this. No, no. But during the... When he was like making the demos, he didn't call it Flaming Hot Cheetos. That's true. Yeah. But I'm saying they okay. already had a spicy hot. So now, okay, yeah. here's and the problem. They already had a well, spicy hot Cheeto. Right. No. They just didn't call it Flaming no, Hot. No, no, no. They were, they were testing uh, spicy 
no, they, items. They called yeah. it flaming hot. They trademarked flaming hot yeah, years before this right. story supposedly happened. Yeah. So here's with what, Cheetos. Uh, yes, or yes, Doritos, like, whichever. Okay. Whichever, whichever doesn't matter. But the point is this: so menace. So this story came out before they even shot the movie. So hey, this guy's lying. How do we right. address that in the movie? Okay. Again, mm -hmm. this this is this is. If you want to talk about revisionist history, uh -huh. this is the best example of that. So yeah. he has this idea. You just heard about it there. He goes to the CEO, which, by the way, doesn't fit the timeline either. This is a guy that he says he went to, wasn't CEO when he says he went to them. Whatever. Okay. So they go to this meeting. They pitch the Flaming Hot to the CEO. The CEO's on board with him, but some of the you know, vice presidents are saying, hey, wait a minute. We already, we already have Flaming Hots. Yeah, we're testing. Sir. <laughs> R&D already has a spicy product in the Midwest, and it's testing just fine. Just fine. I aim to do better than just fine, James. Have McCormick send the spicy seasonings here. I have a good feeling about this man. He may not know about market trends, but he knows about people, and that's where I always put my money. Let's see what he can do with it. Sir, the resources required for it to pivot James. quickly. It looks like you have some work to do. James. Brought it up. Tony Shalhoub to play the CEO. That is Tony yeah. Shalhoub, right? <laughs> he did great in it. Yeah, he was the CEO. It was oh. awesome. So again, that, that conversation couldn't have happened because that, that person that he's playing didn't wasn't the CEO then. Mm -hmm. uh, forget. And again, that conversation never happened because this is all revisionist history at this point because yeah. they're trying to make up for the lies he told. Uh, they did this again. So they, they cut to another thing where like he's talking about how he went – with his wife, and they went to all these markets and found all these fresh peppers to get the correct blend. Oh. Just perfect. Uh. And they said, well, hey, hold on. We're doing this authentically. Uh -huh. But those jerkos in the Midwest, right. they're doing theirs all bad with chemical. Chemically. Yes. Oh. Apparently, in the Midwest, they had already been spicing things up for a while. Except their ingredients came in test tubes and syringes. Yep. Oh, it's hot. 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 I don't know what's going down over there. All I knew was our ingredients came from the ground, our roots. Maltodextrin. <laughs> Monosodium glutamate. Disodium anisonate. See, those are the bad guys. Me and Judy mm. had that spice in our DNA. Yeah. There's, that, there's that band you were talking about, Ravy. Oh, my God. <laughs> They're just always around. <laughs> but again, the, the obvious stick beating you over there. Like the, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a good, potentially a decent story besides it being a lie. It just seems yeah. like just total out. Outright it's, pandering. I'm just pandering from beginning to end. Yeah. And when we announced this, we, so much had, we had a texter text mm -hmm. in when we first announced this and said, yeah, man, look, I'm Mexican. And good God, this is just over the head. Like, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of great stories to be told. But this one, again, revisionist mm -hmm. history and the whole thing. And then to go so over the top with the yes. pandering Ooh. is. I'm going to uh, read you. I, re I reread the LA Times article. Cringe, that, bruh. That out, out of this. And my favorite part of this is so. LA Times, a couple years ago, they're digging around. because they, they, they wanted to do a nice story. Right. That was their intention. Yeah, they, like if it was all true, it'd be a great story. Not to be it'd whistleblowers be exactly. on Flaming Hot Cheetos. <laughs> so they're digging around. And so they're talking to Montagna, Montagnez. Excuse me. I almost made this see a lot of the guys and the, the white guys. And it said Montagnez. Mm -hmm. Montagnez. Uh, so, <laughs> so they're digging around. And he, on his Instagram in 2019... Published a photo with uh, a notebook paper. He had uh, he had a, said mild, regular, hot, extra hot. He put piles of Cheetos on each of those little areas, like he was testing those. And he put Richard Montañez. He signed his name at the bottom and then said 1988 next to it, <laughs> <laughs> as if he kept that photo yeah. for 40 years. He has since deleted that photo <laughs> oh, on account no. of he was because so he got caught in a lie, mm -hmm. and then he tried to double down on the lie by faking a photograph. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh wait a minute, people are going. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, and also he tripled down there's a Dorito Salsa Rio flavor he claimed that he worked on that in 1998 they first test market that again name and all in 1987 he deleted that post too oh, right. so I, what, I think, what I think happened I don't think he's a bad guy Okay. again CBS Sunday Morning kind of hit him with a, a softball version of this, inter, of this these facts I think he was he's a, he was working his way up and he's probably going to like business meetings and he probably told one little white lie that led, led into another white lie. Snowballed. No offense to white people. Mm. White lie. And then he's, but then when he was confronted with some facts, he's like, oh, crap. Yeah. But we still have this great movie. Uh, the lesson <laughs> at the end, though, the lesson at the end of Flaming Hot is this. There's no such thing as just a valet. No such thing as just a gardener, mechanic, maid. Because we all write our own stories. We create our own destinies. Thank you, brother. Gracias. And you think I was going to let someone else steal mine? <laughs> nah. Never. Oh, oh. 
That's the end of the movie. Oh. Talk about Norse. Ah. So yeah, he's yeah, of course yeah. anybody can make up their own story. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Why let the facts get in the way of your story, sir? Yeah. <laughs> it sucks. The guy that could really like confirm everything, the CEO died. guy, he died in uh, 2016 yeah. in a snorkeling accident. Oh, babe. That does uh, suck. At least we still have Tony Shalhoub. <laughs> so available now on Hulu, Flaming Hot. Again, they try to they try to address the lies. It was as a good you heard. movie. It was not a good uh, movie. The audience. What's the audience score? It was like, it, the 90? audience score is a ninety. Oh. Yeah. What's the rotten? What's the... Now, is it because the people 60 don't... 60-something for critics. Is it because good. people don't know the real story, the real facts? I think people just... I think the... So they, of... Anybody can watch a movie and go, oh, that's how it happened. Because mm-hmm. right? it's... it's and a... if, all, if all that stuff was true, it would be... It would be a great story. It would be a great mm-hmm. story. It's yeah. the fact that it, it's all clearly out there and documented that it's not. Mm-hmm. Right. But people don't know that part, and all yeah. they know is uh-huh. whatever they're seeing in the movie. I don't think this is worth yeah. being a movie. I think this is worth being a made-for-TV what, movie. Was this to say. The straight to Netflix? I mean, it's they, on Hulu. straight to Hulu. Yeah. yeah. Are yeah. they making the argument that this was the start of making things spicy? They're saying that he, well, part of the for, movie. For free delay. I didn't pull this up, but part but of I mean, the movie is. But that kind of goes back to my original question. They have spicy goldfish. They have spicy chicken McNuggets. They have spicy. Why is this special? Well, because when, it's like, when the LA oh, Ti- he came up with the idea. Who? To address the point, uh, Greg. Wow, neat. When the LA Times did the interviews, they said that the reason that they had already created Flaming Hot mm-hmm. uh, everything uh-huh. is because they were facing competition in Texas from local, you know, chip and snack companies to have uh-huh. spicy. Yeah. And so Frito said, "Oh, let's 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 create our own spicy because this is so popular." Like I think yeah. it would be a bigger deal if it was a brand new idea. Well, he says he, even his he saw, he saw somebody at the park spicing up their corn. Right. Not on a scale idea. of uh, one to ten, what do you give Flaming Hot? Ah, Dennis Haysbert was good. <laughs> I'll give it a, a three. A three. Oh, three. Again, it's it's cool. The, the, the story is good. The story. Don't gang bang. Support your family. Mm-hmm. Just uh, just don't lie about it. Yeah. Well, there you go. The <laughs> does it suck? CBS review of Flaming Hot <laughs> with Mariachi. <laughs>